So when you hear the name Royal Oak, a lot of people think about the downtown area with its great bars and restaurants and shops. I know that's what I think about. My brother lives down there, so I spend a lot of time out there. But another great thing Royal Oak offers is its fantastic parks. And joining us now on the Oakland County Megacast is Aaron Filipski. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. From Parks, or er, the director of recreation and public service for the city of Royal Oak. So, hi, Aaron. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. How are you? Hi, Erica and uh, Larry. Thanks for having me. And you got my name right on the first try. So, kudos to you for that. Um, yeah, I'm happy to talk with you about our parks. As you know, that's one of our our, our signature uh, uh, amenities here in Royal Oak. We have uh, 51 parks now, if you include Normandy Oaks, which I'd like to talk about um, later. There's lots of uh, great recreation opportunities there. And also I was hoping for the opportunity to talk about our uh, tree planting program that we are implementing this fall. It's a supplemental tree uh, program that we are partnering with Oakland County on to kind of make a, a big impact with tree planting on street sides. Yeah, the opportunity is yours. Tell us more about the tree planting program. Sure, I'll start with that then. Yeah, the um, so the Oakland County uh, Office of Economic Development um, and the Water Resource Council and the Board of Commissioners all uh, pitched in some funding to work with community partners that are part of the Coon Drain District to um, encourage plantings on roadsides for, for a number of reasons. The first really to, to provide character to, to neighborhoods, but most importantly, they have um, a really beneficial effect uh, for mitigating stormwater runoff by, by uh, increasing impervious area and sort of soaking up some of the rainwater and allowing uh, some of the drainage to slow down during peak flows. So, um, and you know, that, that works mutually beneficial for the drain district, but also for our community because uh, trees are a big deal here um, and, and it's something the community really values. So that we can partner with this and make a big impact is something we're excited about. For us, it, it, it's going to involve uh, planting 200 trees this fall. And we wanted to make uh, an impact in such a way that we could, we could just find two, 200 locations throughout the city to plant these, but we wanted to use data to kind of drive where we were gonna place these. So working with a, a staff team, we've uh, identified a couple of areas, both in the north and south end of the city, where data indicates that there is a lacking tree canopy, um, and also uh, based on, on claims that have been from flooding, from rainwater events. So we have identified a couple of areas, and we're gonna take those 200 trees and kind of concentrate them in there, um, and hopefully make a, a noticeable impact this fall, not only to the, the aesthetics of the community, but longer term, uh, and our ability to handle stormwater. That is absolutely fantastic. And moving from that to Normandy Oaks Park, which I know we also want to talk about, you know, we're so used to talking about all the great parks that we have here in West Bloomfield, but in Royal Oak, Normandy Oaks Park seems to have something for everyone. So tell us a little bit about that, uh, the amenities, and even the nonprofit Bees in the D, them installing two honeybee hives. You know, we've had bees on the D on to talk to us before, so we want to hear all about it. Let's dive in. Yeah, it really is. You, you described it pretty well. It's, it's got something for everybody there. Um, I mean, I have to say kudos to the community to say, let's keep this a park. It could have been any other number of developments potentially, um, but the fact that we preserved it, we've got two areas of the park. The, the um, western side of the park is kind of more of an active area, uh, and that's where we have um, play structures, uh, actually a pretty impressive play structure, and most importantly, the, the biggest, most popular feature, it's, it's occupied every day, is our, our new, new splash pad. Um, we also have amenities there for, for picnics, a, a covered shelter there, um, two premier soccer fields, which are in the stage of development right now. Um, and, and so that, that's kind of the, the active area. Um, there's picnic uh, amenities there as well. So really you could go as a family or just by yourself and walk around and have a, have a nice time. Uh, and then the Eastern side of the park is what we've uh, made a, a, we call it a, um, excuse me, it's a, uh, there's a specific term for it, the Oak Savannah uh, Habitat Restoration. And that is taking what used to be that golf course and, and, and restoring it back to what it was uh, before it was cultivated for the golf course. And that meant that um, we, we were retaining and planting native trees. Um, a lot of that area, there's paths that go through there. So you can walk through and have a really enjoyable walk in the middle of the, the city. It's kind of hard to believe when you're in the middle of it where you're actually at, but you can walk through uh, enjoy that and, and at the edges it's largely what might look at first glance to be overgrown is actually um, just allowing the habitat to develop as it would naturally 
And um, the point of that was to create home for, for the animals that like that sort of thing. And, and it's worked, it's, it's developed, you know, having just opened, I'm really surprised to see the amount of wildlife we see in there. There's turtles, hawks, snakes, herons, um, and some really cool, unique features. I mean, there's a couple of ponds, and as I mentioned, the wild flowers and the, um, the wild grasses. Uh, we also have a vernal pool, which is uh, an interesting feature. That's similar to a pond, but it comes and goes seasonally, and it provides a place that's usually devoid of fish, so, so small amphibians can, can develop, kind of like a nursery for amphibians, uh, where they're not uh, preyed upon, and then they can make their way to the larger ponds. And it's amazing, even during the course of the development, to see how uh, these little critters found home there. And, and I walk the park quite frequently. You'd have to try to not see some sort of uh, an animal walking through there. So that's the, the eastern end of the park. And um, that we didn't build that up to be uh, another field, a, a play field or, or something that we left that as it is, really a gem. Um, and I would recommend anybody go there. You mentioned the, uh, the bees. Yes, we did partner with Bees in the D to provide uh, pollinators. These, uh, two hives we have there, and I, I don't recall the number, but tens of thousands of bees in any case. Um, so those are there. We'll, we'll get a, a bit of that honey when it's when it's done. Uh, I don't know if they'll produce much this year, but maybe next year. But more importantly, we're just contributing to uh, biodiversity and encouraging um, uh, that sort of, of, of environmental stewardship. And uh, in a lot of ways, this is this is leading the way locally anyway. Uh, on those efforts. We're really proud of it. And if you haven't seen it yet, obviously go play in the splash pad or, or do those things, but I, you can't go to the Normandy Oaks Park without walking those trails and really taking it in. Well, I love seeing how passionate you are about this. It really shows, and I'm definitely excited to go check it out. As I said, I spend a lot of time in Royal Oak, so now I have something new to do. But also, joining us here, aside from Larry and I, we have Calvin Brown, who's actually from Royal Oak. So yeah. I'm going to let him chime in and ask some questions about his hometown. Yeah, so I, I, I was just thinking about it. You were, I dro just drove by Normandy Oaks Park, at, seeing it after a large chunk of the construction is done, and I was taken aback. It was so beautiful. Uh, I noticed the bridge, and it got me thinking, out of 51 parks in Royal Oak, I'm pretty sure this might be one of the only ones that has water at it. Is that? Do you know if that's correct? I believe that to be true, yeah. I mean, I guess in the springtime, you would say our residents might tell you all of our parks yeah. have water, uh, just from drainage. Uh, but yeah, you're right. With intention, that's the only one that has uh, that little sorts of water features. Wow, that's awesome. What other kind of, were there other kind of design uh, aspects that you were trying, or that everyone was trying to make sure was the first? This park has the first this, the first that, because it seems like they're all, it's a big milestone. Like, it's a huge park near the northern end of Royal Oak. Like, you, like over there, the parks start to get a little bigger, but not anywhere near that big. No, so I guess it's a first in that regard, just, just by its sheer size, mm -hmm. we're talking on the order of 40 acres. Um, so yeah, that makes it unique. The water stuff that you mentioned is, is really a first. And actually, I, I can't speak with 100% authority on this, but in terms of like the partnership with Oakland County, which helped develop this and did a lot of, provided a lot of funding for the, the habitat restoration. Um, it definitely, I would say, is one of the first of its type uh, in the middle of, of an urban area, at least in Oakland County that I'm aware of. Um, you know, you can get that when you go to certain parts of Oakland County uh, and the more rural parts. Certainly, you can see a lot of that. Um, but being where it's located, as I mentioned previously, is is certainly unique to, to Normandy Oaks. So I want to talk a little bit more specifically about this splash pad, because we recently in West Bloomfield have a new splash pad up. And I'm curious how the one in Royal Oak compares to this one. So can people of all ages go to the splash pad or is it more so for little kids? What does it look like? Do we have water slides, little, you know, sprinklers? Tell us more about it. Uh, yeah, it is open to everybody of all ages. Um, as it stands now, it's mostly kids and parents watching from the sidelines. Although a side note, we, we haven't developed it yet, but we're, we're considering, I think we're going to do this as a, as a 50 and over day because I, you do watch some people saying that look, that would be fun to go play in, but I think they might be a little intimidated to go out in there with the kids. Um, so stay tuned maybe for something on that. Uh, but in terms of the, the features, yeah, it's got your, your typical uh, squirt splash type features, but the thing that people love the most, there's no slides, but there is a, um, one of those buckets that fills and, and tips periodically. And there's always a crowd underneath it. And boy, that thing can't fill fast enough. Uh, at certain times of the day, depending on what kind of water usage there is around the area, it might might or might not fill as quickly as normal. 
and we get calls on that all the time. That, that's what they insist on. But there's always a crowd there. That's the big draw. It's so funny you say that because when we talk to our parks directors here in West Bloomfield, they always say that that is their favorite thing about our splash pad and how much people love that is that bucket. And I remember being a little kid and, you know, any water park I would go to or splash pad just standing under that and being so excited. Um, but I know there really is so much exciting stuff going on in Royal Oak right now. And I had things that I wanted to ask you about, but what else do you want to talk about? What more is there going on that maybe we haven't covered in these last few minutes that we have to chat? Uh, well, geez, at least on my end, what, what I would feel most comfortable talking about and in a link, those are the biggies um, that that park has been an ongoing project. And now this tree planting uh, has been, you know, there's other projects going on. There's a, a downtown park, Centennial Commons, which is um, being constructed currently. Um, that's that's going to be a, another great feature in the, the heart of downtown. Um, that will uh, offer all sorts of programming opportunities for us that we're still sort of exploring about how that's going to play out. But the, um, the work is underway. The, the old the old buildings, as you know, it, it's located on the site of the old uh, city hall and police station. Those have been demolished, and it's it's looking like a park. I mean, it's it's mostly dirt now, but it's it's being built up. So we're we're excited to see progress on that, um, and we expect by late this fall substantial completion on that park. So um, I say that would be the next big exciting thing that. Uh, that our residents can look forward to. Well, that is fantastic. There seems to be countless exciting things going on in Royal Oak, and we're looking forward to it. I will definitely be heading out to the park. So thank you so, so much for joining us this morning. It has been great talking with you, and we look forward to touching base again soon as the development of all these things continues. We'll definitely have you back on. So it's been wonderful. Thank you for having me.